Good morning. This is Barry Knapp from Ironsides Macroeconomics. It's 8.25 a.m. East Coast time. Um, our note uh, and audio summaries this week are titled The Big Bond Week. There is just a tremendous amount of important stuff that's going to happen this week. The quarterly refunding announcement this morning, the Treasury will announce the size of the next quarter's refinancing needs. We suspect that'll be a little larger than the last time they estimate it, estimated it since uh, the deficit has been some $90 billion bigger in the three months since that announcement than at least the street was expecting. More importantly, on Wednesday, they're gonna announce the composition um, of the quarterly refunding. Recall that um, back in early August, that composition led to a kicked off a big sell off in the back end of the treasury market. We were describing that as an insidious bear steepener. And then in, in um, early November, it stopped the insidious bear steepener along with the Fed's pivot by um, sh shortening their issuance, issuing more than the Treasury Borrowing Advisory Committee's recommended 15 to 20 percent of total issuance in bills. and. Um, moved a lot out of, instead of increasing longer term uh, maturity issuance, they moved a lot of it into the belly of the curve, twos to fives. And um, and that stopped the selling in the back end when tens went to 5%. But to us, it was something of a Band-Aid. Uh, the issue with that is it will drain or is draining the Fed's RRP balances and potentially uh, causing the Fed to alter or slow or even end quantitative tightening, leaving the Fed with a bloated balance sheet. So uh, this is a big question for the Treasury that will be resolved on Wednesday morning before the Fed meeting. So that's obviously big item number two. And then that you know, perhaps the biggest item of all is Friday's employment report, because that could render everything Chair Powell says at the press conference on Wednesday is null and void were we to get a another employment report that shows weak, weak labor demand, but some stabilization in the supply of labor and uh, a continuation of the disinflation in wages, which stalled out in the fourth quarter in part, we think, because the supply improvement stalled out as well. Immigration is still running strong. We know all about that. Um, but uh, participation for prime age workers was surging in the first half of last year and stalled out in the uh, uh, since July or so. So um, our, our note this week was structured into you know four main parts, Crenstron, crunch time for the quadrilemma, our idea that to get the Fed to cut to four, which is the level we think is required to disinvert the curve and keep the tenure note in the vicinity of 4%, not from going back higher. The unemployment rate will need to rise above four and average hourly or not average hourly earnings, really the broad measures of, of wage growth will need to decelerate to below four. Um, so that's all about Friday, but bef before we get there, um, you know, we get these two other important dynamics. Now, the earnings story so far is very muddled in terms of a macro message. The S&P has been rising through earnings season, but the average stock isn't going up on the day that it beats. The average beat is about 6%. Earnings are tracking negative one six on 3.7%. Revenue growth that is not a robust V-shaped earnings recovery at this point from the earnings recession we had in the fourth quarter of 22 and first half of 23. Uh, and the dispersion around sectors is obviously very wide. We all know about how tech's the only real sector surging to new highs and everything else is kind of lagging. <clears throat> Revisions are flattish. They're improving for some of the economically sensitive cyclical sectors like consumer discretionary and industrials, but only to the boom bust line. So very muddled picture there. Same story with GDP. The market was cheering in some ways, the strong GDP numbers, but when you look underneath the, 
you know, into the details, you see that GDI is likely continue to continue to run considerably weaker than GDP. Consumption is pushing up GDP. The mix of goods versus services is shifting back to goods. We don't really know much about services till we get the quarterly services survey 50 days after the end of the quarter. So government makes an estimate of that before they even have that decent data uh, for the last week's report. Investment is soft. That's not the mix we want. We would like to see trend consumption and strong investment to improve the supply side of the economy. That's what would be good for equity investors in particular, but that's really not what's happening. We will get a decent productivity number, but it's a productivity number, labor productivity. It's just a residual of GDP, less hours worked. It should, should look good, but it's unclear that this is really about technology, innovation, adoption, total factor productivity. It looks like it's just a quirk of the data. Inflation's coming down, nominal growth is coming down. That's not great for earnings leverage either. So um, on balance, there was less than meets the eye to that GDP report. We've got this big week ahead of us. Um, there's a lot of details in the note. This is why you should be a full paid subscriber. We spent a lot of time talking even to the press about it. There's a Barron story we should be quoted in coming out about all this. Um, if you didn't see the Wall Street Journal story about the most important man in finance, you probably never heard of. That's all about this treasury mix and whether they're going to issue more longer term securities or shorter term securities. One way or another, we think they're going to have to increase duration over time. And that is going to put upper pressure on rates and the Fed ultimately is going to contribute to that as well. They shouldn't be setting rates the way they were um, for the last 15 years or so. So that's it for me this week. Remember this battle versus productivity, the productivity boom versus um, policy bust is going to be on offer this week, and it should be uh, should be pretty exciting stuff. Barry Neff from Ironsides. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.